Well, I'm here in the rain. I've been out here in Ithaca at a supercharger for about two and a half hours now. My car is totally dead. My wife just came by. We tried jumping it because the 12 volt battery did get low and it turned everything on, but the car is totally dead. Won't go into drive or anything. So just when I was thinking that things were going better and this car was, yeah, kind of nice again, this happens, totally dead. I came here to supercharge and can't supercharge at all. And now I'm out here in the rain waiting for AAA. Sucks. Tow truck is here. I'm gonna take it home and just deal with this tomorrow. It's probably gonna have to get shipped over to Albany. I'll call Tesla tomorrow. There was no Tesla phone number I could find anywhere. I have no idea how to get a hold of Tesla. So luckily my wife has AAA and uh, we're at least gonna get it home so I can go to bed. I don't know, man. Kind of sucks. To be continued. Well, it's up and I tried everything to reset the computers. Uh, it just won't turn on. I don't know what's going on. Then shortly after tinkering around, the displays went all black and turns out the 12 volt battery had died. And I gotta say, that 12 volt battery did not last long at all. I was here maybe a half an hour and I disconnected the 12 volt battery. I disconnected the fireman's loop uh, like twice. And then I tried the normal reset procedure with holding the steering wheel buttons down. Did that a few times. And shortly after that, the 12 volt battery was dead. So be careful because that 12 volt battery will not last long. It's been pouring rain this entire time. It's been miserable. But yeah, I still have no idea what's going on, why it won't turn on, but it seems like the contactors won't close in the battery pack. I don't think it's that common of a problem, but that's a problem for me, lucky me. So it's all loaded up. We're gonna get home and put it in the driveway and I'll worry about it tomorrow. Try to contact Tesla tomorrow, try to find their phone number and go from there. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. It's kind of windy out here. So I have my car up on a jack because I wanted to get access to the high voltage fuse that's under there. Thankfully with the 2019 uh, Model X's, there might be others, I'm pretty sure it's the only one. Uh, you can access the high voltage fuse from underneath the car with pretty much every other S or X, you have to drop the whole battery pack <laughs> to get to the fuse, which is just so stupid, but that's just the way they did it. So in order to get to that fuse, like I have in my T-Rex back there, the T-Rex camper, because that has an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack, I have to access that from the top. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get this problem solved because Tesla said it was gonna be the 22nd of January before they could even come out here. And today is December 31st, so that was not gonna work. That's a, a very long time away. And also I have this trip to Austin planned, which I was about to announce. I actually have a video uploaded, ready to go, but then this all happened and I had to figure out this stuff before I could release that video. So I'm out here working on this. You have to get a special socket in order to take off the cover for the fuse under here. I'll show you all this stuff in a second. I didn't film any of that because it's kind of tight under there, uh, but I also wasn't sure if this was actually the problem. Uh, I got the cover off already. I tested it and it turns out the fuse is bad. I have no idea how or why this would have happened. Just normal driving and for some reason the high voltage fuse went. So rather than waiting for Tesla to someday come over here and save me, I wanted to be able to fix it myself and I've been um, just trying to do some testing and trying to figure it out. So I'll take you underneath and I'll show you what I'm doing right now. So here's the cover plate. Surprisingly, there's no goop or anything. I, I thought it was gonna be a pain in the butt trying to pry this thing off, but thankfully it wasn't. And then under here, you can see all these bolts. Well, hopefully you can see them. You can see they have a crazy head on them. It's a special bolt that Tesla made and trying to find the socket to get these things off is a really big challenge. So thankfully, my Tesla parts guy over at Alpha Auto in Cortland, New York, shout out to him, let me borrow his socket. And I guess he had to have this custom made because you can't get them anywhere. I have since found them on eBay from one seller. I'll post a link below. I'm not affiliated with them at all and it's not a 
referral link or anything. It's just so you guys know, so you guys have it. So I'm gonna buy at least one just to have on hand. Unfortunately, they're like $62 or something like that. So that really sucks. But yeah, so you have to have that bit in order to get this out. And then there's this cover right here. So when I dropped the plate, I saw the orange plastic and I'm like, shit, maybe I can't get this from underneath, but it's just a little plastic cover that you just remove with your fingers. And then up under here, you can see the fuse and you can see my meter right here. I just tested for continuity between those two and there is no continuity. So I'm gonna pull that fuse out and replace it. So Tesla does have some different model numbers for their fuses. I'm not sure which one I have, but thankfully again, my guy at Alpha Auto is just awesome. And he gave me three to give a try. I'll have to buy one of them, but it saves me a trip all the way back out there. So I've got three different versions with different model numbers and he had a whole box of them. And these are just three different model numbers that he had on hand. So I'm gonna check out and see what I have in the car and compare it to these. They should essentially do the same thing. So we'll see. I think any one of them should work, but we're gonna find out here shortly. But man, this car is just driving me crazy. I'm, I'm really hoping that this solves the problem. I don't have to deal with Tesla. Well, I got the part out. I use safety gloves. Obviously you wanna protect yourself. Then I have it sitting over here on the bench, but now that I test it here on the bench, it does have continuity between these two poles. So, man, I don't know, this really sucks, but there's the part number. Looks like it's revision F. This one is revision E, so it's the newest one. And then this one is a B, and there, oh, there's a D. So, I think I'm just gonna try to put that one in there and just see what happens. But there's a little fuse here and a little fuse here, and then across the whole thing, and all of them have continuity. So it's not a fuse, most likely. So that really sucks. I thought I had it figured out. I'll put this in there, give it a try, but I don't think it's gonna work, unfortunately. Well, no, unfortunately that did not solve my problem. I still have these warning lights. Bummer. Not sure what I'm gonna do now, but it really would suck to be out of a car for a month. Well, unfortunately I am no better off than when I started this morning. Uh, don't know what's going on. I can even add to the list of problems, which, it's still probably just something electronic, but now my doors and the trunk don't open all the way. One of the last times that my service guy was out here, he told me that if you lift this all the way up and then you hold this button down, it recalibrates the car and then you push the button and now it's supposed to go all the way down, but it still doesn't. Push it. So then I have to close it manually it closes. If I lift it up again, it still goes to that same point. It doesn't go all the way down. And the same thing with my Falcon wing doors. They're only opening part of the way. I've tried to recalibrate these as well, but they aren't <laughs> opening. So if I hold the button down, they go all the way up. But then that doesn't recalibrate them. This still goes back and only opens 45. I have looked in settings. I know some of you guys are gonna say look in settings. There is a spot where you can select low always at this location, but it's selected normal or whatever it was, not low. I just measured the 12 volt battery again. It is still only getting up to 12.6. So it is possible it's the battery, but it's, I feel like that's unlikely. But that's the next step is if I want to, I'm gonna have to pull all this apart and go try to buy a battery today. Even though it's covered under warranty, it's just, do I wanna spend a couple hundred dollars now and have a fix now or wait a month of not driving my car? I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. But if you guys have any suggestions, of course, let me know. The most logical suggestion is buy something else. <laughs> all right, to be continued. So I disconnected the 12 volt battery for over two hours, hoping that would get rid of these codes that I'm getting here. And it didn't. So now I did a full factory reset. And as you can see here on the right, the screen just keeps flashing back through the same process. 
So this has been going on for a couple minutes now. Hmm. This really sucks. Just keeps going through all of these screens. And the car downloaded the software update uh, like yesterday, but it keeps getting failures every time I try to install it. So I don't even have, uh, what is it, 50.40.1 or something. And I think there's like a 0. 0.6 that people are getting now. So this is the 0. 0.1, and I still don't have that one. It won't load. Oh. Jeez. Oh, I'm so sick of this crap. Well, not really a good day. Everything I tried didn't work. So I still have a dead car in the driveway. I did make a service appointment because I thought it was a 12 volt battery. I was hoping it was only the 12 volt battery, but it's not. I disconnected the 12 volt battery from the car. I charged it, got it up to the right voltage and reconnected it. And I still have all the same warnings. So that didn't work. Um, then I also disconnected the 12 volt battery for like two hours, hoping that would clear it. And I just reconnected it really crossing my fingers and that didn't clear the codes I'm getting. Then the last thing I could do was the factory reset. I've tried the other little soft resets that they, they talk about online. Uh, none of those worked. So I did the factory reset and that didn't work either. I still have the codes. The car is still undrivable. Yeah, not sure what's going on. So I contacted the guys over at Electrify Garage and they are super helpful and willing to help and work on this. And I do have a warranty, but they're gonna take a month. I mean, they'll, they'll take the car, near service centers five hours away, which they pay for, they'll do all that stuff. But then they'll have the car for probably a month before I see it again. And I was planning on driving this down to fully charged live in just like four weeks, three weeks I was gonna leave. But if I sent it to Tesla, that wouldn't happen. But working with the electrified garage guys, that could still be a possibility. So that's the route we're probably gonna go. I'm talking to Chris now. We're gonna figure out if I need to tow it all the way over there or if maybe they can help me remotely. Uh, there'll be more on that later, but just disappointed that I couldn't get it fixed and clear that code. I really wish we all had access to Tesla software so we could work on stuff like this and clear codes that come up. We have access to the OBD2 scanners and everything and that'll clear codes, but Tesla just does not give us access to the car systems. So uh, unfortunately it's not solved, but I'm sure there'll be more to come. Just another day of being a Tesla owner, I guess. Uh, so bummed, but thanks for watching guys. Hopefully I'll have some good news for you eventually. See ya.